Broadway musical has always been a unique mix of high art and low, music and comedy, business and show. In its earliest days, one production above all brought together a variety of theater traditions, combining song, dance, and comedy in one extravaganza, the Ziegfeld Follies. We still hear these great stories about his shows and, and how perfect they were and how chic they were and how stylized and how beautiful and how artistic they were. When the curtain would rise on the Ziegfeld Follies, first and foremost you'd see spectacular settings, the like of which you'd never seen before, shimmering with color and light. Then we bring out the ladies of the ensemble. There were grandiose and beautiful production numbers, which were Ziegfeld's favorite part of the show. The novelty acts, the sketches, and then the tableau vivant. There were gorgeous girls, and they were vaguely undressed, but the whole thing was innocent and very American. Ziegfeld made a myth of uh, the American extravaganza. It was abundance of talent, abundance of design. Erte did the curtains. Everything was absolutely the best that money could buy, and that's what he sold. The joy of Ziegfeld is that he is his own best creation. Florence Ziegfeld, impresario extraordinaire. In 1893, a 26-year-old first-generation American named Florenz Ziegfeld Jr. came to Broadway looking to secure an act for the Chicago World's Fair. When Ziegfeld arrived in New York that spring, there were no theaters north of 42nd Street. Long Acre Square at Broadway and 42nd was nobody's idea of the crossroads of the world. At the edge of the Tenderloin, an area of stables and brothels, it was notorious for horseplay. There was plenty for Ziegfeld to see, however, much of it on Broadway just farther downtown. There were blackface minstrel shows. <laughs> Knockabout comedy acts from vaudeville. You think the same as I'm thinking. And lots of European style operettas with beautiful maidens and heroic princes. The least expensive amusements were located a few blocks east of Broadway on the Bowery, where all sorts of boisterous routines amused the hard-working immigrants of the Lower East Side. The audience are the ethnic minorities who have moved into New York City. And so one way to appeal to those minorities is to have comic sketches and songs that caricature ethnic stereotypes. Italian jokes, uh, uh, Irish jokes, uh, Jewish jokes. But by being made fun of on stage, they're being included in America. Florenz Ziegfeld ultimately hired a performer from Broadway, from the Casino Theater on 39th Street. Appearing in Adonis, Eugene Sandow couldn't sing or dance, but he could attract a crowd. Ziegfeld makes his first mark with a weightlifter, bodybuilder, and gorgeous physiqued man named Sandow, who virtually took the fair by storm. He wore as little as possible to keep the censor out the door. Women were passing out by touching his muscles. Ziegfeld had a healthy understanding that sex, 
cells. And it played an important part in everything that he did. In 1907, Florenz Ziegfeld found the formula that would make him Broadway's greatest showman. Called simply The Follies, Ziegfeld's review took the French Folie Bergère and made it American, with song, dance, and comedy sketches. The Ziegfeld Follies really were an amalgamation of everything that was happening in America, in New York, at that time. This was an age where all these different ethnic communities were coming together, different kinds of music, ethnic comedy routines, and he would wed it together. Flo Ziegfeld was like the Broadway equivalent of uh, the melting pot itself. He had all kinds of ideas churning in him all the time. He was always thinking of something new to do, some new talent to find. The Ziegfeld touch had to do with beauty. The thing that he was most interested in was glorifying the American girl. Necessary for a girl selected for the folly to have personality and have grace. I do not care whether the hair is long or short, blonde or brunette. Daddy had a wonderful knack of finding a beautiful girl. The eyes should be large and expressive. He would pick a girl that you would think was pretty. A regular profile is a decided asset. And by the time she got on the stage, she was suddenly beautiful. And last but not least, Proportions of the figure must be perfect. The showgirls were exquisite. They came from all over the country. They were all about six feet, and they were very attractive. They were fabulous. They carried those beautiful costumes. And uh, they had to learn a certain walk in order to balance the hats. The hats were huge, and their arms were outstretched. They call it the Siegfeld Walk. My mother was a Ziegfeld girl. These women were gorgeous, and uh, they were objects of desire. My mother, in her day, never opened flowers unless there were jewels in them. And then he had the ponies, you know, the dancers. I was a dancer. And after getting into the follies and all the things that followed thereafter, oh, my word. <laughs> I felt marvelous. There were loads of other showmen, but Siegfeld just captured a certain extra something. Flo's genius was his ability to match his color palette to his music his comedy to his spectacle, mixing the whole until he produced a unique work of art. No one ever knew how he accomplished it. Billy Burke Siegfeld. A pretty girl is just like a pretty girl. 